One of the biggest lies believed by all people of the world for generation after generation is the one involving gravity. When I tell people that gravity doesn't exist, they look at me as if I were a madman, even standing there stuck to the side of a spinning sphere where gravity keeping me pinned to the earth standing perpendicular to the axis. They'll tell me that apples fall from trees because of gravity. The blood in our veins will react to different positions held by the subject due to gravity, and the earth which we stand upon spins around in space in an elliptical orbit due to gravity. The same force that allows the atmosphere to remain fixed at a specific distance above the world and prevents the same atmosphere from expanding infinitely into the never-ending vacuum of space. The magical force of gravity that is so weak we cannot feel its effects or measure it, despite thousands of experiments attempting to prove its existence. Gravity is a force supposedly so strong that our moon's measly one-sixth gravity is powerful enough to tug up on the Earth's oceans, supposedly causing the tides yet fails to affect the atmosphere in a similar way for some reason, and also so weak that our world's much larger and greater gravity appears not to be tugging down upon the face of the moon, as the moon is supposedly getting more and more distant as the years go by. What goes up must come down is a law of physics here on Earth. We're told that what goes up must come down is caused by gravity, this mysterious, infinitely weak, yet infinitely powerful at the same time, People do not seem to understand the fundamental necessity of, quote, gravity in the globe earth slash heliocentric model, and assume that gravity has been a known fact or a constant force ever since the world was created. Gravity supposedly causes two completely unrelated bodies, for example, the non-existing globe earth and the sun, will somehow latch on to one another using the vacuum of space, or nothing, as sort of a rope or a tether between the two objects. Even the original proponents or designers of gravity it admitted it was a nonsensical flight of fancy to believe that we lived on a spinning globe. However, if that were the case, then a certain force would need to be prevalent, which defies all known physics and logic. Scientists to this very day are baffled in terms of what medium gravity waves use to tether unrelated bodies across vast distances of space without leaving any sort of trace of its existence or any way to measure its effects. Then, of course, that's when the wild flights of fancy take over the minds of theoretical physicists, which is so far removed from the scientific method, or specifically the zetetic process, it's quite improper to call them physicists, since their entire premise of reality is based upon a series of nonsensical assumptions which are completely out of line with physical reality. This is why science cannot prove or disprove or detect gravity, because gravity does not exist. Gravity was a theorem designed during a phase of history when electromagnetism was completely unheard of. Had you explained an electromagnetic schematic to Newton, he probably would have burned you as a witch. Being sarcastic for dramatic effect there, however, you can understand that electromagnetism plays a huge role in our physical reality and is completely left out of the entire globe earth heliocentric model altogether and is still to this day remained left out because once you introduce electromagnetism into the model the heliocentric premises break down into an illogical pile of impossible fantastical nonsensical lies which hold about as much validity in terms of being realistically accurate as the dream of a fart. The entire heliocentric model relies on the Earth being a spinning sphere and relies on the nonsensical, non-existent force of gravity to hold up to theoretical scrutiny. If we indeed lived on a globe that is spinning once per 24 hours or over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, yet not spinning any discernible rate at the pole, the Earth must be tethered to the Sun by nothing with only the sun's gravity holding the earth to its circuit, yet the gravity of the sun is totally undetectable here on earth. Furthermore, if the earth is orbiting the sun and the moon is orbiting the earth, is the solar plane supposedly lined up or in accordance with the galactic plane? I believe that's the case. For argument's sake, let's explore both options. Either the solar plane, which most of the planets orbit around, is in accordance with the galactic plane, or the plane which the sun races around the galactic center upon, or B, the Earth and the planets are orbiting the sun at some other angle to the galactic plane. 
either case this proves gravity and I'll explain how. Now keep in mind I'm humoring the conventional accepted model for uh, scientific scrutiny, something nobody seems to be concerned with since everyone knows the Earth is a spinning globe, right? Uh, now that stance is the opposite of science and we should always try to either verify or debunk any accepted physical model of our world, which is of the most important consequence if we ultimately want to understand the truth. I should mention here that the heliocentric model was asserted to be a stationary model for a great percentage of its evolution as a compounded lie. Lies on top of lies. Gravity sort of makes sense if the sun is stationary, which was the belief of many theoretical physicists, including Newton. So all the people who point to Newton as this god of physics should note that he was completely ignorant of electromagnetism and believed that the sun was stationary. He also stated that his hypothesis of the globe Earth spinning around the sun was preposterous and was really only a fanciful theory to explain the observations of astronomers throughout history. The fact that the model seems to align with the observations of astronomers is really no mystery, and whomever doesn't understand this needs to look at the history of the lie again. The lie was crafted to maintain accordance with the observations. The observations are not proof of the lie. So, if the Earth is orbiting the Sun in accordance with the galactic plane, this is sort of easy to imagine. Just think of the Earth orbiting the Sun, and the Sun is orbiting the magnetic center of the galaxy in the heliocentric model of today's line of thought in sort of the same sort of path as the Earth orbits the Sun. So the, the Earth is orbiting the Sun on one plane, and the Sun is orbiting the magnetic center on essentially the same plane. So if, if this is the case in the accepted version of the lie, then gravity must be repelling the Earth away from the Sun sometimes, and gravity must be attracting the Earth towards the Sun at other times. Think about it this way. If the solar plane and the galactic plane are in alignment, then during, say, the winter, the Sun is heading straight towards the Earth at over 500,000 miles per hour. Since the Earth is only supposed to be traveling at 18.5 miles per second, or 66600 miles per hour, then the Sun should crash into the Earth every winter, in about 186 hours or less than eight days. If it is gravity which attracts the Earth to the Sun, keeping it perpetually falling around the Sun, then how is it possible for gravity to repel the Earth from the Sun when the Sun is racing towards it at 500,000 miles per hour? Again, if the Sun were 93 million miles away, then it would crash into the Earth in about a week during that time of year. During the other time of year, say in the summer, in this example where the planes are in alignment, then the Sun would be racing away from the Earth at 500,000 miles per hour, and so the Earth's trajectory around the Sun would need to catch up with the Sun, traveling almost 10 times faster than the Earth, which has just swung around the Sun, traveling in the opposite direction, after somehow avoiding the Sun crashing into it at a half a million miles per hour every winter. Now, on the other hand, if the solar plane is not in accordance with the galactic plane, then a whole different series of problems arise. Again, gravity was theorized in an era when they believed the sun to be stationary. All of those probably calculations done by Newton and the like all, all assumed the sun was in a fixed position, and so their theories were all built around this constant premise. Nowadays, we'd all laugh at how ridiculous their position is. However, they're still considered the gods of physics with their infallible laws of gravity, which cause apples to fall from trees, so it must be true, because apples never float up from trees, do they? Well, if you really get into the mathematics, an object that is fixed to a spinning globe, a light, not-so-massive object would be stuck to the ground based on the assumed principle of gravity. The problem is, as objects get more and more massive, the more outward thrust they should experience generated by the Earth spinning beneath it. I realize this sounds counterintuitive, however, an object increasing in mass on planet Earth should seem to get lighter and lighter from the observer on the ground's calculations. If we indeed lived on a globe spinning around an axis point hurling through space, the more massive an object got, the more outward thrust it would experience from the spinning Earth. This is due to the outward thrust generated by a spinning body affecting larger, more massive bodies with more force. So to be very honest with you, if we lived on a spinning globe, the larger and more massive an object was, the easier and easier it should be to lift from the spinning Earth. At any rate, back to the example where the solar plane is, say, 90 degrees, for argument's sake, to the galactic plane, 
then the planets orbiting around the sun would create a vortex pattern, which also cannot be adequately accounted for by the theory of gravity. Gravity has very strict and rigid laws which it must obey, and very strict rigid laws it must break to remain a viable theory. If you're into theories that defy common sense and physics, then by all means, continue living in a fantasy land designed to imprison our minds on a spherical Earth. Gravity is not a necessary constant law of physics. What goes up must come down is a law of physics, which is ultimately dictated by the laws of density or buoyancy, and governed by electromagnetism, most likely by all accounts of modern science. Modern science has assumed that gravity is true and correct, yet still continues to search for any trace of this mysterious gravity in physical reality. Many cutting-edge scientists will argue that inertia is possibly an electromagnetic force, and I tend to agree with that notion. Electromagnetism explains many of the mysteries surrounding our world, and gravity is unnecessary on the flat Earth, which is stationary, and does not need an inward thrusting force to keep us stuck to the side of a spinning globe, standing perpendicular to the axis. In the 1860s, Dr. Robotham, or Parallax, went through a number of scientific experiments to gauge whether the waters of the world have any curvature. You must understand, in order for the entire heliocentric model of our world to hold any weight, it all relies on the Earth being a sphere spinning around in space and flying around the sun. All of these fantastical theories and flights of theoretical fantasy hinge upon this minor detail of the Earth being spherical. Unfortunately for the proponents of the heliocentric model, it has been scientifically proven that the oceans of the world do not hold even one single degree of curvature. In the 1800s, mariners were on the very brink of calculating the circumference of the lower latitudes south of the equator, and it appears that they had calculated that the latitudinal lines were much larger in terms of circumference than even the equator. You understand, circumnavigating the southern hemisphere should be just as easy as circumnavigating the northern hemisphere if we lived on a globe. It wasn't too long into the future when the U.S. government, along with all world military powers, signed the 1950s Antarctic Treaty, which essentially squashes any free roaming or free geodetic surveying of the southernmost regions, and a complete geodetic survey being called for by mariners in the late 1800s was forever silenced, and therefore we still live on a globe. People will argue that they've been to the South Pole or were stationed near the South Pole in one military or the other. This is entirely missing the point, but it is also interesting to ask them exactly what they were doing way down there in the South Pole. Did they ask their generals or lieutenants or colonels what their mission was? Did they realize they were there in accordance with the Antarctic Treaty? Did they confirm their navigation up to that point, or were they possibly stationed near the North Pole? for the sole purpose of them beholding the spectacle of the 24 hours of daylight at the South Pole. Just a question, who knows? Any other unclaimed territory in the world anybody knows of? Have you seen one stretch of land in the most obscure of places here on Earth that don't have some degree of ownership laid over them at least? In more often than not a thousand McDonald's every square mile. There's only one place on this entire world that is illegal to freely travel for all nations, where we cannot visit on our own accord, by our own navigation and reckoning, without the express permission and guidance of the said world powers. We're told that the southern regions are an icy wasteland with nothing to see but penguins and ice. We're told that people have been there before, so it must be a continent on the bottom of a globe. Nobody has ever circumnavigated the southern regions because it's impossible to do so with the false assumption that we're on a globe where the longitude lines converge back into a point at the South Pole. In the 1800s, mariners were baffled by the fact that despite their arduous attempts to go around the Earth south of the equator, were often completely confounded in terms of where they were and where they should have been, assuming the latitude lines indeed get tighter and tighter as you travel south of the equator. Gravity cannot possibly explain the globe model any longer. For one, all the world's oceans have been proved to possess exactly zero curvature, therefore the Earth is not a globe, and the entire model falls apart, rendering gravity wholly unnecessary. Even if we did live on a spinning globe, the more massive an object is, the more outward thrust it should experience by the Earth's spin, and therefore, Heavier objects would tend to lift off the ground or fly into space if they were indeed massive enough. People standing near the equator are stuck to the side of an imaginary globe, standing perpendicular to the axis, yet way about the same at the North Pole, where they're supposedly not spinning at all parallel to the axis. The sun is either repelling us away or pulling us towards it, depending on the time of the year. I guess it depends on how the sun feels that day. And yet the flat earthers are the ones who are called nonsensical. Wow.